Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. A Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas, everybody. Everyone. Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. Good morning and a warm welcome to this Christmas Day service. It's just going to be a short time to reflect on the birth of the Lord Jesus as we celebrate his birth today. So as we begin, let's pray and ask for God's help. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that all those years ago in Bethlehem, he was born. The eternal Son of God made flesh, born as a baby. We thank you for all that that meant, all the promises of God being fulfilled on that morning. Father, we praise you and we ask you, Lord, that you would be with us in this short service as we together remember the birth of the Lord Jesus and celebrate it together. And we ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our opening song, which uh, we're going to listen to, is called He's Here, and it's by Michael Tinker. Come to us, he's born for us. 
Now, watching that, it seemed ridiculous, didn't it? You would never expect a child to open a present and then turf it aside and play with the wrapping paper. I know that very little children do like to play with the box, but as they get older, you would never expect them to do that. And for an adult to do that would just be bizarre. And yet, I think that at Christmas, we are really guilty of losing the focus on the Lord Jesus, that great gift of God to humanity that Jesus was given to us. And yet we can lose him, lose sight of him, lose the focus on him. If I use my jumper as an illustration, we can lose him in the midst of candy canes and Santa and trees and ginger men, gingerbread men and, and presents. We know that, don't we? But actually, as Christians, I think that we're also in danger of losing them amid shepherds and wise men and angels and stables. There's so many different things going on and we kind of pay attention to all these different things. But we're in danger of losing focus on the thing that's at the very center, the one who's at the very center of all of these stories. The one who is the reason why there are shepherds and angels and wise men. We lose sight of Jesus. We lose sight of the fact that the Savior of the world had been born, the promised Messiah, and we get all taken up with all of the wrapping. Whether it's Santa and trees and turkey, or whether it's wise men, shepherds and angels, we need to be really careful that these things don't distract us from seeing the wonder of the birth of the Lord Jesus. I wanted to look today at a story of a man who totally got this, whose focus was 100% on the birth of of Jesus, this promised Messiah. It's from Luke 2, and it takes place about eight days after Jesus is born, when his mum and dad took him up to the temple to make the offerings that they had to make. They met a man called Simeon. And just listen what happened. So Luke 2, verse 22, and reading to verse 33, it says, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the, in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. So just picture Simeon. 2,000 years ago, going into the temple. It had been revealed to him that he would see the Lord's Messiah, the Savior, before he died. And on this day, he was moved by the Spirit to go into the temple. And going in, he saw Mary and Joseph, these parents that he'd never met before, and carrying a baby, as I'm sure there was other people around doing exactly the same thing. And yet Simeon knew that this baby was the promised Messiah. And we're told, we're told there in verse 28 that Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. Now, do you think he took him in his, his arms like this, maybe? Like a kind of Lion King pose? Or maybe he took him in his arms just gently. Imagine a tiny eight-day-old eight, eight baby in Simeon's arms. And you can imagine him just like looking into Jesus' eyes and knowing he knew in that moment that here was God's promised Messiah, the Savior. Look at what he said. 
He said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. He says, now you can dismiss me in peace. I can die now a happy man because I have seen your salvation. I have seen the Savior. I've seen the one who is going to be the one who saves humanity. Who saves all who put their trust in him. Who crushes Satan's head under his foot. Who establishes the promises of God. I have seen your salvation. There's no doubt that Simeon knew exactly what was important. And there was nothing in the way. There was no turkey, there was no tinsel, there was no trees. There was no focus on wise men and stables and shepherds or angels. The focus was 100% on Jesus, this tiny baby, the answer of all God's promises. And this morning as we celebrate Christmas, I'm sure you're not celebrating in the way that you planned to. I'm sure that things are not going to uh, go the way that you would like them to even. Perhaps this Christmas, with it being a wee bit quieter, there's a bit more time and a bit more space for us to see, fix our eyes on God's salvation, the baby who was born, Jesus, to clear away all the other things. And rather than focusing on the wrapping paper, would we see the gift? So after this video, Take some time, maybe straight after so that you don't forget to do it. Take some time just to think about Jesus, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Think of all that Jesus did here on earth. Think about his death on the cross for you, to pay the penalty for your sins and to bring you into God's family. Think today of God's salvation through the Lord Jesus. We celebrate his birth because it is the greatest event that ever took place, the incarnation of God. Be like Simeon. Look upon Jesus and see him for who he is. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that he was willing to come that the Son of God became human, was born as a baby. Father, we praise you that he is your salvation, that he came to save us and to restore us into relationship with you, to undo the fall and the curses that comes with our fallenness and to restore us into relationship with our Creator God. Father, today, help us to clear away all the clutter that would distract us and to focus again on the birth of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus. And it's that that we celebrate today. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn now is going to be O Come All You Faithful.
we do indeed praise him. And we do come today before the Lord and adore him for sending Christ, the Lord, our Savior. As we finish, let me say the grace. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And I hope you have a great Christmas. God bless.